Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lily and if you guys could really do me a huge favor and please please hit that like and subscribe button Okay, maybe you could just hit the subscribe button now and the like button after you watch this video But that would be really really helpful Missing someone. Missing someone. So if you've already read the title, you know what this video is about and I kind of just wanted to sit down and talk to you guys a little bit about how to create your very own online thrift boutique or thrift store, whatever you want to call it. I have started mine and it's Little Antiques, very cute, very fun. I started it at the end of July and for me, my journey is I started it because I got laid off my job and I wanted to do something fun that didn't feel like a job, that it was a creative outlet. It was right in the middle of the pandemic, so I just wanted to keep myself busy and creative. So I started this online boutique. It's been really, really fun. And I feel like now, 10 months in, I know more than I did then. And I wish I knew some of the things that are really helpful to kind of get yourself going. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. So the number one thing that you want to do to start your own online store or thrift store is you want to come up with the name i find that the really fun name boutiques like catch my eye whenever i see them or someone tags them like i want to know more about them so just something fun that has to do maybe with your aesthetic with you personally do that and also make sure if you're thinking about it make sure you create the instagram now just so that you have that handle like set you know so you don't have excuses later that you don't have a name or the name is taken or blah 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 so that's number one and then the next step is aesthetics i think for us thrifters like you're kind of used to seeing a piece and then imagining it right in your space but for a lot of people that's actually very difficult so you kind of have to find out what kind of things you're thrifting for for example mine's like a european romantic mid-century modern slightly boho so i kind of already know what i'm looking for right like i'm not just putting random things um online because then it's just extra noise and it distracts the people from picking the things that actually they want in their house you want your feed to look consistent so that when people go to your page or your shop or whenever it's drop day they know exactly what kind of pieces to expect i think also it helps like obviously it has to be like an extension of you so for me i'm buying things that would kind of fit into my own home i kind of sometimes preview things in my own space to do sneak peeks and stuff like that i think if you're selling home decor it really helps to show a little bit of your house and your aesthetics as well um okay so the next step you already have your name you already kind of thought out of a aesthetic the next thing is sourcing right so this is like the big stuff this is what actually matters so for sourcing i think you should have two things in mind number one is location like are you driving really far away to get your things and if so you have to keep in mind that you're gonna have to upcharge your pieces because that has a lot to do with the pricing right because your time your gas so i would say kind of stay locally especially if you live in the suburbs or anywhere other than like new york and los angeles because it's so picked through and it's kind of annoying check out your local thrift shops sometimes they don't have to be like the goodwills it's like the mom and pop ones that have some really really cute stuff and sometimes it's already upsold but even if you upsell it just a little bit more for your profit i think it's worth it because some of these pieces are like actual treasures they're so freaking beautiful that's the best part is that Technically, it kind of feels like you're a personal shopper and I think that's what I love about it Yes, I'm spending my own money at first, but then like I get paid back, right? So it's really fun because you're just like shopping for other people's homes and it's really fun Make sure you make it fun. Don't make it like a job thing because then it kind of takes the fun out of it But yes, so location is definitely one of them and another one is I would say either budgeting or pricing like keep that in mind because it's very important I think when I first started I was so excited that I wasn't really thinking about making a profit which is the whole purpose so if you find a really cool piece but it's already way too expensive think if you could actually sell it for a little bit more or if you just rather leave it for someone at that thrift store to pick up for the actual price don't spend over budget so much so that let's say you you just drop like $300 and it takes you like two months just to see a profit because then also 
you know, that's not really worth it either. So you kind of have to keep that in mind when you're sourcing. Something that I think helped me grow right off the bat is I thought of an idea and I was like, I'm just gonna do this for fun. Again, literally the whole point of starting this thrift store was for fun. I started it because I was buying for my apartment and I had too much stuff. I did a little interactive poll on my personal Instagram. If my friends would purchase from me, they said yes. And I was like, let's do it. So that's kind of how I started. Something that really helped me is I was at a thrift store and I was like, I don't want to hold inventory, like, but I want people to be able to see what I have found. So I did a thrift with me um, and I did a live sale. I find that live sales are, a, really profitable, really fun, and then people just feel like they have to buy it then and there because if they don't, someone else could pick it up, right? Or there's also that like slight chance that you as a buyer don't end up taking it home, which has happened to me because you're like, oh, I didn't get that much reaction in the live buy, so I'm not gonna take it home. And also I should clarify by live, I don't mean like I go live on Instagram stories. So I put a story up before I go and do the live buy to let people know what time I'll be in the store just so that they can prepare. And I also put the price on whatever I'm putting so that they know that they can immediately purchase it. The other thing, like I was saying, is photo shoots. I would say when I do a shoot day, it literally takes me, I would say like three to five hours to set up and bring all my props and bring out all my inventory to take pictures and then like to clean up and then make my space back into like a normal one. Literally how I do it guys is I use my mirror i put a sheet over it i have a really cute pedestal that i have as a side table and i just pop things up on there and i use props i love using baby's breath um, for like dry flowers sometimes i use fresh flowers um, my perfumes my jewelry is a huge prop that i use um, candles i found that one recently and it's so cute because it's such an aesthetic it's such a vibe on your feed when there's the candles are actually on it's very very cute so photo shoots is definitely time consuming but i would say it's so so important because that's how people are going to get to visualize it um in their home and how they get to see how you see it because sometimes they're like i don't have good taste or i can't see it but if you tell me how to do it i'll do it type of thing so people trust you at this point you have the name you have your aesthetics you've sourced maybe you did a live sale just to get like the attraction coming to your followers and now you've done your photo shoot so you're ready to do your drop i think that it's very important that you do like sneak peeks and i have to get better at that i think other accounts that are better at this have grown more and do grow at a faster pace because if you just kind of like do a drop out of nowhere a people don't know when you're gonna do it b people don't know if they want to be there because like they have things to do but if you do a little preview and they see something that they like then they're gonna turn on the notifications or make sure to remember to be on instagram at 6 p.m on a wednesday night you know what i mean so definitely do sneak peeks also it's very important that you keep inventory and you keep track of everything i've actually found it that to save time and kind of like kill two birds with one stone is i do this step when i'm shooting um so i have like my laptop in front of me and i'm shooting a piece and i'm typing in my spreadsheet like ceramic seashell and i see the price i take the price tag let's say i bought it for five dollars and in my head i'm doing like the math and i'm like okay i'm gonna sell it for 15 dollars for a 10 dollar upcharge i'm sure there's better ways of how to do the upcharge i'm sure there's like a strategical math equation to like keep in mind the gas the time the effort everything but i don't really do that i kind of just look at the item look at the price how much would i actually pay for it on instagram um how much would kind of shipping be if it's too expensive then i keep that in mind maybe i like take down two dollars um, stuff like that so i write it all down i take the picture and then it's good to go right so now you have something um to account it for later so definitely do that and keep up with your books like i also market when i sell it and i'm gonna okay i'm gonna insert here 
like a little screenshot of how I do it. I have the item. I also have a description of kind of the material and I find that really helpful because that also helps me gauge as to what materials are selling more. So when I go back and source, I keep an eye out for, for example, for crystal. Crystal's been selling well, marble's been selling well, cane does really well, things like that. So I do like to show the material. And then next, I think I have the cost. How much did it cost me to pay? And I also just have a separate section for taxes because sometimes we forget that we paid taxes and you have to keep that in mind. The next one is usually profit, but I don't, that one I leave blank till the very end. Next, there's a blank section for how much it's sold and at the very end is the pricing that I'm gonna drop it at. For example, if I have this ceramic seashell and I said I was gonna sell it for $15, I'm gonna put the 15 there. And let's say that it didn't sell until it it went on sale for $12, then the $12 actually goes in the sold. You want to be very mindful about that too because maybe you had expected to get a $300 profit for your first drop, but in reality, you only got $220 because a lot of your pieces went on sale and they sold for the sale price versus for the full price. You just kind of want to have a visualization of everything that's happening so you can look at all your personal analytics. It's very important. Um, I'm not very good at it i just know that i have to keep a record of it luckily my boyfriend graduated um, with analytics specialty so he's been saying he's gonna help me with that so i'm really excited about that i think that that's it <laughs> I hope that this gives you a little bit of insight on how you can start your very own online thrift store. It's one of those things where I'm like, dang, it's even gonna become more pick through, but it's so exciting because at least this way, like people have a small business, people are motivated and I love to support that. We love that vibe. I love that for you. So I think you should start your very own. And if you guys have any questions on my thrift store or on my experience, definitely leave it down below in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button that we talked about earlier thank you guys 